Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the group exhibit of Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries at Hanover Messe 2014. Uh, today, I will be speaking to Ballard Power Systems about uh, commercialization of fuel cells in a variety of markets. Uh, please welcome to the stage Managing Director, uh, Platform Managing Director of Engineering Services, uh, Mr. TJ Lani. Hi. Hi. Thank you for coming. Thanks. Have a seat. So I would be under the impression that majority of people here are probably familiar with Ballard Power Systems, uh, but for those who may not, uh, can you perhaps just go into a bit of detail about what the big areas of focus um, is for Ballard currently? All right, uh, Ballard Power Systems, uh, we're located in Vancouver and British Columbia, and we're a world leader and manufacturer of PEM fuel cells, but in addition to our PEM fuel cell stacks. The other two areas of focus for us right now are engineering services centered around PEM fuel cells and also um, taking the opportunity to look at where we can license intellectual property over the uh, history of, of IP and research that we've done in the past. Okay, so in terms of the fuel cells, uh, what products does Ballard offer in terms of the, the type of fuel cells? So we've got a number of different fuel cell offerings. We sell individual fuel cell stacks. We also sell um, systems, full telecom backup power systems, as well as uh, what we call fuel cell modules, which we use in heavy duty buses, which include the fuel cell stacks as well as key balance of plant components. We also sell uh, half megawatt to multi megawatt distributed generation systems. Okay, so in terms of, uh, you mentioned a bit about the markets of these fuel cells. Um, what are the typical applications for industry? So uh, the, the smaller fuel cell stacks, the air-cooled ones are um, typically used both in materials handling and in telecom backup power applications. We've got uh, liquid-cooled stacks, which are also used for materials handling. Uh, the fuel cell modules are the heavy duty fuel cell modules are typically used in um, uh, transit bus applications or also transit tram type applications. Uh, we have around 100 kilowatt stacks that are geared more towards automotive type applications. What would you say is the most widely used uh, fuel cell that Ballard Power offers and what is it typically used for? So uh, right now we have about 4,500 stacks that are in fuel cell forklifts. Those are our 9 SSL range of uh, liquid cooled stacks. We've also got around 2,500 stacks in telecom backup systems around the world. Okay. Um, in terms of, you mentioned some international um, sales. Uh, what would you say are, are your major uh, projects that you're involved in right now? Uh, as far as engineering services goes, our um, engineering services segment is, is underpinned by a uh, very large development program that we're involved with with Volkswagen. It's a, a four-year program worth roughly 60 to 100 million dollars and that's kind of forms the basis for our engineering services. Beyond that we've got a number of other projects in engineering services around product development, um, test station manufacture and delivery, um, and other uh, equipment and testing services and things like that. Um, another major project that we're working, that, that we've got underway that went through from last year was an IP licensing opportunity with a group called Azure Hydrogen in China. Uh, that is basically allowing them to um, license the, the design of our fuel cell module. So Ballard will continue to provide fuel cell stacks to them, but the fuel cell module will be um, built in China and they will work towards bringing in indigenous Chinese uh, components and, and altering the design to allow it to be uh, manufactured in China. What about on the, uh, the telecom side? Do you want to go into a bit of detail of your telecom projects? Yeah, so telecom backup power systems. Um, we have uh, two and a half and five kilowatt systems, ones that run on pure hydrogen and also ones with an onboard reformer. So they run on a mix of water and, and hydrogen. We've got a number of sites around the globe working with uh, channel partners to distribute to major telecom companies, companies like NSN and Motorola, um, Vodafone. 
and over the the past year we've seen a significant increase uh, I think it was some around 800 units last year the majority of them around 85 86 percent were the methanol units um, yeah okay um, what would you say are the major large-scale projects you've went, went to the the buses um, I know that there are a couple others out there involved and there's always news releases being issued by Ballard perhaps you can share some light on some of your major project projects currently uh, we've got also some uh, four buses that were delivered to uh, Aberdeen Scotland and a number of other initiatives throughout the EU uh, we've got uh, initiatives through joint tech in technical initiative funding. Um, the bus systems at the moment are uh, largely brought into play through cooperation with government funding as well. Um, what separates uh, Ballard fuel cells from the other fuel cells out on the market? Uh, there are a lot of different fuel cells here today. What separates Ballard's? So Ballard has the entire um, supply chain through for for the fuel cell so we uh, coat membrane ourselves and we do the manufacturing of coated membrane at at Ballard's facility we then you know either in some cases make our own plates or we buy plates and do the assembly ourselves of the fuel cell we have many years of, of fundamental understanding and know-how that goes into design of the MEA assemblies and um, the, the catalyst layer and, and through that we have industry leading uh, performance and durability. Any new technology that you're working with or that will be out on the market that you can go into some detail about? So we're working on uh, the next generation of air-cooled stacks that we're going to put into our telecom backup power systems. We're also working on the next generation of uh, heavy-duty modules for the, for the bus segment. Uh, both of those technologies will help drive down cost and increase lifetime and durability. Perfect. Um, what about any projects? You know, we've covered some of the previous. Um, do you have any anticipated, any areas that you're looking to focus on that you can discuss? Um, you know, areas for us moving forward, a few, a few different things that we see as kind of development and the next generation of commercial areas we're looking at um, continuous power both for telecom backup and for residential we're looking at opportunities to increase uh, market penetration for buses but also to to decrease costs so that bus will move from what it is now where it's getting funding from from government subsidies to drive these um, projects to you know a real commercial opportunity and we're also looking at how we can further leverage our, our IP and our know-how in order to build on the Volkswagen deal and, and get more um, support, more areas where Ballard can, can push our engineering services to support automotive OEMs. We've got a lot of automotive companies that are pushing to have fleets out in the next few years, Hyundai, Toyota, Honda, and we're looking at opportunities to work with, with other um, automotive OEMs and, and move forward with commercializing the uh, automotive fuel cell market. Perfect. So sounds like you guys are going to be very busy. <laughs> um, at this time, I'm going to open it up to the floor. Anyone in the audience have any questions for TJ regarding Ballard? I'll start in the corner here. Hi, uh, my name is Franklin Liao from Sunlock Electrical Equipment. I mean, I got the impression that you, you guys have gotten out of the automatic, uh, you know, the automotive fuel cells since 2007. So are you suggesting that you're now making a comeback, but not through direct, uh, not through direct uh, development, but rather through IP part of it? Through IP and through, through services. So yeah, that's true. And, and we did get out of direct automotive development. Um, and as of last year, through the, the uh, program that we're doing with Volkswagen, we are doing automotive work, but it's more as engineering services to an auto automotive OEM, and Ballard itself is not developing an internal product for automotive fuel cell stack. Okay. That doesn't conflict with uh, the, the deal with Daimler as well as Ford, does it? We don't currently have a deal with Daimler and Ford. Um, we were in, involved with them, but that, uh, as of the beginning of last year, that lapsed, and so we were able to start working with other automotive OEMs as well. Okay, so your hands are free, essentially, yes. Correct. Okay, thank you. 
Any other questions for TJ? Okay. Uh, sticking with the the automotive applications, um, what is the uh, the business case of a fuel cell? Yeah, are these are these hybrid applications? Are they are is the the drive strictly a fuel cell? I'm like I'm wondering what's how does it compete with uh, all electric battery storage um, in in cars or or hybrid cars? I mean, in some cases it is a certain level of hybridization. In other cases, it is strictly fuel cell. Usually, there's an advantage to having some level of hybridization because you have the opportunity to get um, regenerative braking and the same advantages you see from a gasoline hybrid. The main uh, advantage over gasoline or diesel is is the environmental aspect of it. The advantage over bat like a strict battery electric is the speed with which you can refuel it and the power density, uh, the amount of energy that you can carry on board through hydrogen storage rather than battery storage and the, the weight and space advantages. Just a question in the center here. Uh, I have two questions. One is that you mentioned the one of the key applications for Ballard is residential moving forward. Is that a individual houses or it's going to be a like complex apartment units? And the second question is, is Ballard interested in expanding the business into the uh, decentralized power generation where currently gas turbine you know, power generation is prevalent? Okay, to answer your first question, um, the one area that we're looking at as far as residential is for areas where there is no grid connection. So it is, you know, individual houses, but in some cases, you know, smaller uh, groups. But it's in, it, it's primarily in areas where there is no grid connection. And so this provides them an opportunity for electricity. Uh, for your second question, as far as distributed generation goes, we have already explored that area and we are looking at that going forward as well. We have a distributed generation system up and running in Torrance, California. Um, the, the typical application is somewhere where you have a waste stream of hydrogen available and the, the fuel cell distributed generation system can make use of that to generate electricity. All right, I'm going to jump in on that question. Uh, currently, uh, currently, utilities in Canada are not having a good time when it comes to getting funding for pilot projects like this. So how are you dealing with that? Moreover, you, you know very well the natural gas is what what you know, that's the nature of the business in North America. So are you actually working on the, with those two departments when it comes to your distributed energy projects, you know, for detached or microgrid implementations? Right. Um, primarily for us, it, it does really make the most sense when you do have hydrogen fuel available, say, from a waste stream from a, um, a chemical process or something like that. You have to couple that with feed-in tariffs and what you can do to, to sell energy back to the grid, especially if you're in a situation where the, the customer who's providing the hydrogen doesn't necessarily have the entire capacity to use it. Um, so depending on market conditions, you know, certain areas are, are better than others, and some areas of Canada are not ideal for that. So you know, we're looking at, at other opportunities and, and other areas where there, there's better conditions for the this, this system. All right, uh, thank you, TJ. Thanks, everyone. That brings us to the end of our session. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much.